Hello, baseball fans. Chris Terrell here with RotorPros.com to bring you another DFS MLB video. Today, we're going to be looking at my top picks for Friday, April 23rd, along with a little bit into my process and how I use the sheet each day to come up with my cash versus GPP plays or just my plays in general, looking at starting pitchers, teams to stack, and then individual player positions, and then some of the other tabs to go along with that sheet as well. Before we get into that, if you're not a Roto Pros member, make sure to get over to our website. That's rotopros.com. Um, this is where you're going to find our featured articles for the day, strategy articles. Um, if you want to get access to our Slack chat, you need to sign up and you can get a seven-day trial right now for a monthly membership or a three-day trial for a weekly membership. And that's going to get you access to our cheat sheets, our Slack chat, our one-on-one -on -one coaching, and much, much more. We cover NBA, MLB, NHL, UFC, EPL, UCL soccer, NASCAR. Um, we've got tennis action going on in chat right now. We cover betting, DFS for FanDuel, DraftKings, Thrive Fantasy, Prize Picks. We've got you covered for DFS. Join our winning team today. With that said, let's get into the video. All right, baseball fans, in this video, we are going to look at my top pitchers, top stacks, and top individual plays at each position for Friday, April 23rd. I also want to uh, really focus on some things that I look at in determining those plays that I look at on the sheet. There's a ton of research information on here, so reach out to me in DMs absolutely anytime, and we can go over anything, whether you want to share a lineup and get my input, whether you want to talk uh, strategy for stacking and GPPs, how we build cash games, uh, the difference between cash and GPP, we can dive into all of that. I'm going to touch on a little bit here in the video and some things I look at, but definitely reach out in DMs uh, absolutely anytime. So uh, at the start of the day when I start entering the lineups, this is the tab that I use a lot, um, but only when the lineups start coming in. It's got projected lineups on here for now, um, so it can kind of give you a little bit of insight into the info, but generally where I start every day is with pitcher. Um, in terms of cash games, for sure I'm starting with pitcher. Sometimes for GPPs I will start you know, if I have a stack that I really, really like, I'm going to plug that in and see what I have left for pitchers, but that's only a GPP strategy. For cash games, I really start looking at the pitcher landscape. Tonight, we've got um, a bunch of aces out there. So Friday's for the aces. Um, for cash games, it, it's pretty clear to me. I love Jacob deGrom here, but the price at 10.9 on DraftKings and 12.5 on Fandle just makes building the rest of your lineup pretty darn hard. And when looking at the stats, Tyler Glasnow has been pretty darn close to that. Only, And he's $800 less on DraftKings and $1,300 less on FanDuel, making building a cash lineup and using him as a core play to build around uh, my top option tonight for cash games. They both have under one ERA when we start looking at the stats. So that's one thing that stands out. Then I start looking at the XFIP. So that would be your, ex your expected. Um, so it kind of takes out the defense and just looks more at how the picture pitcher actually perform so generally we want something in the sub threes uh mid mid threes is, is about average so seeing these guys in the 1.6 xfip and glasnow at 2.36 is amazing whip which is walks and hits per innings pitched under one just in that absolutely elite territory both with 40 percent k rates um as you can see, DeGrom's swing and strike rate is just absolutely insane right now. Um, Glasnow, 16.5%. Anything over, you know, 10%, 11% is considered really, really good. So seeing, you know, anything over 15% is just absolutely elite, top of the league right now. So you can see they're they're very uh, comparable. Um, obviously, DeGrom's got a little bit better of a matchup, uh, you would think, overall. But again, the price point in cash games, Glasnow for me, I like the pivot to DeGrom. If we slide over and look at the opponent, is something I will always look at next. So this would be the opponents versus daily split. So they're both right-handed pitchers. Um, so this is Toronto and Washington versus right-handers. And for Kershaw, who, who's a lefty, this is San Diego versus lefties. So if you're trying to figure out what that opponent versus daily split, it's just one split um, that we can compare all pitchers to and all opponents to um, if we've got a mix of righties and lefties in there. If you want to break it down more, you can actually look over here a little bit more and look at the... Um, versus righties and versus lefties side by side. So then I will look at the opponent, how they've been doing on the season in terms of WOBA, WRC plus, which is anything with a plus behind in terms of stats that you see on the sheet. That means it is park um, adjusted. Um, so for instance, Colorado is not just going to be at the top because they're in Colorado, although that park factor isn't quite there yet this year um, in terms of the cold weather and stuff that we've seen. But uh, what w WRC plus is, is really just puts it at park adjusted numbers so we get a really more of a true tale of what a team is actually doing compared to league average. So anything above 100 is a percentile per point and anything below is a percentile down per point. So for instance, uh, Hugh Darvish is facing the Dodgers. 
for the season. They're at 115 WRC plus. That means they're creating runs. Um, so park adjusted at 15% higher than league average. That's what that WRC plus means. That is a key stat that I look at for almost everything. Um, WOBA is weighted on base percentage. I've talked about this in the past, but it pretty much we've got on base percentage. So if it, anytime a batter gets on base, he gets a point in that on base percentage. Well, that doesn't tell the whole story um, because doubles are worth more than singles. A single's worth more than a walk. Uh, triple's worth more than a double. Homer worth more than all of them. That's what WOBA um, gives us an account for is it gives a bonus um, to guys that have, you know, get lots of extra base hits versus those guys that just hit singles. If you're just looking at average, uh, you're really not diving in to the full scope of what a player or team has been doing. So I really use Woba and WRC plus. And then ISO is just isolated power. So that is something I dig into a little bit more in terms of GPP is uh, when I'm looking at my GPP stacks or fading a pitcher for GPP, I, I'm really looking at that ISO. And then K percentage that stands for itself, how many batters they face and how many strikeouts per batters they face. And then I like comparing the opponent on the season to the last seven days data as well, just to see if a team is trending. As we get more data, I'm going to be looking at like the last month, the last 30 days as well. So we can kind of see trends um, of teams going up or down and players also going up or down. So that looks at all those stats in the picture tab, but this is by far the number one place that I start my research every day is I really need to see, um, especially because right now I'm playing about 80% of my buy-ins every night. So if I'm playing hundred bucks, I'm playing $80 in cash games. That's 50 fifties, double ups, head to heads. Um, sometimes even triple ups I'll consider in there as well, but generally I'm just playing the single entry double ups with as many contestants as possible. Um, so this is where I start my research is at the pitcher. So going with glass now that kind of, and generally with pitchers on DraftKings where we have the roster too, I'm trying to keep that salary, um, right around that 20 K or under, if I can get it under 20 K, that's great. It usually leaves me a lot of room for my bats. I can still go after a, a big team. Um, but I don't really want to be going over 20K. So Glasnow is really nice as well because we can now target a pitcher. You know, 8,900 mats fits into that 20K. I'm not looking at mats. I'm just kind of looking at the pricing. Myself, I'm going down to uh, uh, Oscar Yanoa for Atlanta. He comes in as a minus 153 favorite here. Uh, you know, mid-range in terms of the park factor. I don't have the weather updated on that game. But what I like here, he's got a 3.94 ERA. That's that's decent. Anything under four is decent. But what I really like to see is that the XFIP is is a run and a half lower. Um, so generally, what we'll see there is some positive regression and see that ERA start coming down closer to that XFIP as time goes on. Um, and that kind of stands out. I like to you know back check all of these stats. I don't just look at one stat. I like to look at a number of things um, and make sure a pitcher really checks off a lot of boxes. Um, so. Moving over, we've got whip, which is your walks and hits per inning pitch. One, anything, you know, 1.05 and under is really good. So seeing one or anything under is awesome. Um, he's got a high K rate, 32%. Uh, he backs that K rate up with a 14% swing and strike rate. Um, so that's really good there. He's only walking 4.8%, which is among the highest on the slate. A lot of ground balls in there as well. So we get a 30% plus K rate and a 50% plus ground ball rate. That is really good to see as well. Um, usually leads to not a lot of homers. The one issue we see here with the advanced stats, scrolling over a little bit, is the 91.5 uh, exit velocity is some of the highest on the slate. Same with the hard contact at 55%. So he's been getting hit, hit pretty hard, which really goes a lot into last game. I believe it was versus the Cubs. They hit three home runs off of them. Seven hits, uh, three were home runs. <laughs> six earned runs in that game. And that was in Chicago. I believe the wind was blowing out. So it's just a really bad spot for him before that. He started out as a reliever the first start, and then he came in and he's pitched 11 innings in, in his next two, his first two starts of the year. So it was very positive there. I think he can get back to that, and I'm willing to take the risk at 7,500 tonight. Dane Dunning is kind of a GPP play off of, uh, you know, I really, the it's the matchup that scares me the most here that I don't like for cash games because he's going up against um, the White Sox, who are 10% over league average in terms of runs created. Um, the power's down, so that that's something nice to see. Doesn't a little bit, but still not enough for cash games. But uh, ten percent above league average in terms of weighted runs created, um, twenty percent above league league average over the last seven days in there as well. And you see the power is starting to come up as well. So it's a little bit scary um, in terms of the matchup. But the seventy three hundred dollar price tag, uh, you know, is probably going to be higher owned by quite a bit. You probably get Dunning at you know like a five to eight percent, maybe even lower in some cases. So that's where I'm looking at for pitcher. So now we will move on to the bats.
So for my bats, um, I like to start the team stacking tab on the team level. First of all, before I get into the individual bats um, at, at individual positions. So what I'll look at, obviously, first of all, is the implied runs. So this is your Vegas odds, the over under, all that's baked in. I don't model in any kind of uh, weather or anything because Vegas does a pretty good job of that. If the wind is blowing out at 20 mile an hour um, at Wrigley, we're going to see the over under in that game, probably around anywhere between 10 and a half um, and even up to we've seen at times 12, 12 and a half, uh, depending on what pitchers are pitching, fly ball pitchers, that sort of thing. So Vegas does a good job of that. So I don't weigh that in. I just literally calculate the implied runs off of the Vegas totals um, and odds. Um, I then have a model myself which looks at a bunch of things over here on the right. I've went into this before. I model the implied runs, the park factor, um, how the teams performed on the season in certain stats, how they performed over the last seven days, um, the, their, their WOBA in the split, uh, the WRC plus in the split, their power. And I will adjust this every day and I'll build multiple models. And if you want to build multiple models, just go up to the top, hit file, create a copy. Um, then you'll have your own copy that is editable. Then you can come and start changing these numbers around. Um, and then you're going to get spit out different rankings, which is all the way over here on the far left. And that's what changing all of these numbers up here do. So something I will look at for cash games. This is pretty much my basic cash game model. I'm probably going to adjust it a little bit and put some last seven days um, information in there as well. But generally, if I'm going to a GPP style, I'm going to crank up the ISO and the split. I'm going to crank up the ISO the last seven days and then um, probably just leave that ISO for the season. But that's something I'm looking at. I'll also look at the opponent starting pitcher hard contact percentage possibly there's a bunch of different things you can do with this model if you want to get into this a little bit more definitely hit me up in dm and we can talk about how to adjust this model a little bit more to customize it for yourself but uh, right now i'm going to be talking a little bit about cash games and i'm starting with number one and two in my model with boston and oakland first of all boston leads the league in hitting this year um, run score wrc plus woba all those kind of numbers um, even over the last seven days, they've been hot. They get a great matchup versus um, Kikuchi here, a 474 ERA, 392 whip, uh, 121, uh, or sorry, 121 whip, 392 XFIP. You know, it's not too bad. He's not giving up a whole bunch of fly balls, but uh, he's given up a 16% home run to fly ball rate, 47% hard contact here. The X Woba is higher than the Woba by 65 points almost. Same with the X Slug over the Slug. Those are advanced stats indicators that I'm looking at here as well. Um, if we scroll over and look at the splits here a little bit, you can see we probably want to be targeting Boston righties against him. He's given up a 374 Woba um, to right-handed bats, and he's got a 659 ERA, 423 whip against righties. He's been pretty darn good versus lefties, so maybe avoid those in terms of cash games. I don't mind adding those in for GPPs, but generally for cash games, I'm looking at those Boston right-handed bats at the top of the lineup. We'll get into those individual plays here shortly. So what I'll do, that, that team stands out for, for Boston. Then I will go through and I'll start looking at the individual plays. So for today, I've got Boston. I've got Oakland, who has been red hot over the last seven days, as you can tell here. Um, they've been a little bit better on the road. They've been pretty split in terms of lefty-righty, but they have been a little bit better versus lefties, but they get a great matchup as well versus Jorge Lopez. Over three starts, he's got an 856 ERA. It hasn't been that bad. It's only a 331 XFIP, which is pretty darn good. Um, but the whip is up there, so he's given up lots of walks. He's given up home runs early. If we go look at the exit velocity, it's decent. So we're probably going to see that home run to fly ball rate come down a little bit. But he has been pretty bad, pretty bad barrel rate here in terms of all these top pitchers and teams that we're looking at. He just hasn't been great. And then we go over the home runs have come pretty much against both, over three home runs per nine versus righties and lefties. So we can kind of target everyone, but the XFIP versus righties is a little bit better. So lefties, I would say for Oakland, are going to get a little bit more of an advantage, but I'll generally be targeting all of Oakland. Um, Seattle down here I like as well against Martin Perez. <clears throat> this is the pitcher matchup that stands out here. Seattle, while they don't stand out here in terms of overall WOBA WRC+, plus, even over the last seven days, they have been a surprising team, very balanced attack and some nice value. So I'm definitely going to be looking at them. And the matchup stands out here as well. Martin Perez, 5.93 ERA, just as bad XFIP, 5.58 is the worst, second worst on the slate behind Vince Velasquez, who this is his first start. 
Um, if you're wondering why no game started, he's come out of the bullpen three times. The first time was really bad. So he's still working those numbers down. That's why it looks so bad. So keep that in mind. It's probably only going to see him go four to five innings or so. But getting back to Martin Perez here, 154 XFIP. So he's given up lots of walks and hits, um, 41% fly balls. The exit velocity hard contact isn't great. So maybe not the best matchup in terms of looking for home run power. Um, GPP upside, but I definitely like it for value for cash games here as well. So going through the individual positions now, um, looking at catchers, Dom Nunez is a Coors bat I will be looking at. He is under 4K. The, the pricing is just wrong here. FanDuel, you don't roster a catcher, and he's 3,700. Um, but over on DraftKings, he is still under 4K in a game in Coors. He's been above average, 27% above average versus right-handed, or sorry, left-handed. That last, sorry, Velasquez is a righty. So against right-handed pitching, he's been above average. He's been red hot over the last seven days and a very solid start for a catcher to begin with, with a lot of power. Four home runs from a catcher in Coors facing a struggling Vince Velasquez. I will take that any day. It's my top catcher over on DraftKings. At first base, uh, Matt Olson stands out. He has been scorching hot over the last seven days. 321 WRC+, plus, 231 WRC+, plus versus righties in there as well six home runs on the season and he's still only at 5k when we've got a freddie freeman at 6200 that's just 1200 dollars that we can use to build a much more balanced lineup in terms of cash games um so you definitely go other ways in terms of gpps but for cash games it's definitely matt olson for me second base uh i talked about boston righties uh kiki hernandez hitting lead off at 4,000 is just mispriced same with 3k on FanDuel. Uh, top, like I said, they're the top hitting team in the league. He's hitting leadoff, and while he hasn't been great against lefties, he has been good over the last seven days. He's really starting to heat up, and just that opportunity and that price is enough for me to consider him a top cash game play uh, for Boston tonight and a part of some Boston stacks, which, by the way, did not work out so much last night. But, hey, it's a brand new day. Um, and Jazz Chisholm, we're probably not going to see him be hitting at the top of the lineup like he has the last two games just because it's lefty versus lefty, which is going to make him a nice GPP pivot here because people probably will be fading, especially on FanDuel 3300. I don't mind a Miami um, pivot stack, I guess you could say, for GPP against Alex Wood. Uh, Jed Lowry, the reason I've got him labeled as GPP because I said I do love Oakland. If you are stacking Oakland top of the lineup in cash games, even two or three players in cash, um, I don't mind Lowry. The reason I have him labeled as a GPP is just because he's $900 more <clears throat> than Kiki Hernandez down here. Um, that price difference is just too much uh, for me in cash games. I will be going Kiki. But if you have room for both of them, um, you know, on FanDuel, the multi-position eligibility, definitely Lowry is a great play. Third base. Alex Bregman stands out. He's really starting to heat up here now that he's gotten back. He's got multi-hit games and two straight. Five hits in the last two games. He's absolutely destroyed lefties. Goes up against Andrew Heaney. And the price, again, um, he's just underpriced right now because he missed time with COVID. He was cold before he went out because of that uh, COVID protocols. But he is starting to heat up now. So I want to get on board before he's in that mid-5K range. He's going to be in the Justin Turner, um, Raphael Devers at the top of this third base price on DK very, very soon. So getting him under 5K is a bargain. So he is my top play. If you want to go super value and, you know, want to get away from that and save even more money, Ty France down here would be my second uh, play that I'll go to under 4K for him on DraftKings. I think that's a great price. Uh, he's hitting out of the two spot. He's hit lefties very, very well to start the season, showing some power against lefties as well. And he's just generally been awesome to start the season, hitting second behind Mitch Hanniger. Over on shortstop, Xander Bogarts is definitely a pay-up pay up spot for me tonight on FanDuel, where I think he's a little bit underpriced at 3300 That $5,600 price tag on DraftKings is going to be hard to get in there, um, but for he'll be GPP only over there. So he's going to be a core play on FanDuel only for me tonight. Um, I love going to Miguel Rojas here, who's probably going to be hitting leadoff tonight, or at least first or second for Miami. Um, against a lefty. He has absolutely destroyed lefties uh, so far this season. He's hitting them very, very well. It's a small sample size. Keep that in mind. But anytime we see numbers like this against lefties, even in 10 to 14 at bat sample size, it's really good to see to start the season. He's been good overall over his last seven days, 433 Woba, uh, 178 WRC plus. And on the season, he's sitting with a 300, 400, 417 slash line. So not a ton of power here, 
But in, in terms of consistency, which is what we're looking for in terms of cash games, um, that plus the opportunity at the top of the lineup versus, um, you know, say an average at best, Alex Wood. Um, we don't really, we can kind of ignore the run line and, and the park factor at these prices for a player that has been that consistent because we're not looking for power out of him here anyway. Um, singles, doubles, triples would be great. Uh, scoring runs. So definitely like Miguel Rojas. Going over to the outfield, a couple of core plays. Um, it looks like I need to sort this. So that's one thing I wanted to show you as well. So as I go through the sheet and I'm looking at some of these numbers, some things that I'll start analyzing when comparing players or when I'm writing articles and some things I'm looking at, I'll go look at, say, let's, let's see, uh, in the outfield, who's been hot? Actually, let's just go right over to the um, all batters tab because we can start comparing all batters here. We can go, let's say we want to look at over the last seven days, who has been red hot? So I need to bring this tab down here, um, and I'm going to sort Z to A. And this is something that you can do. Again, this is going to start showing up. Give me a second. This is why I wanted to do this in the outfield, because I cleared all those NAs off of there, so it's a much, much easier. Some updates that I'm going through with the sheet. So over the last seven days, we want to see in the outfield who um, has been the most consistent in terms of WOBA. So only one, you got to look at the plate appearances here. So that's why I added plate appearances to see the sample size. So Bryce Harper, 22 plate appearances would be the leader here over the last seven days. I look, kind of look at generally if anything uh, over 15 plate appearances over the last seven days. I want to see how guys are doing. Uh, Bryce Harper, red hot, 371 WRC plus. Then I'll compare that to how he's done for the season or the other way around. I will look at guys, let's just say for W uh, X or sorry, Woba for the season. Sort that highest to lowest here. So Byron Buxton's got a 605 Woba on the season. He's backing that up, guys. Uh, 582X Woba is, is absolutely incredible to back that 605X Woba up. He is really finally, finally having that breakout year. Um, so if you want to look at that in the outfield, who has the highest Wobas and who then has been good over the last seven days, you can kind of compare that. Just things that I am generally looking at. So I'm going to go back here and sort by price, and I'll give you a couple outfielders that I am concentrating on. Uh, obviously, when lineups come out, that's when the core plays definitely are going to be finalized. But generally, I like, you know, scrolling down here and looking at these green plays. Mark Can is going to be at the top of the order going up against Jorge Lopez. He's been solid, 151 WRC plus against righties, 137 WRC plus over the last seven days. Um, five or solid, uh, while the average isn't there, he's getting on base. So we'll slide over here and just look at his Woba on the season. Yeah, 386 backs it up with a 380X Woba. So he's been very, very solid, a nice price range. Um, in the outfield, I'm generally trying to look for those guys on DraftKings in the four, high three to mid 4K range. I really like going balance in the outfield unless there's just a play that just stands out. But on a 14-game slate, generally going to be looking for in cash games, probably three-team exposure in like a 3-3-2 type build. Um, or a 3 3 one, one. I don't like as many one-offs. I like to kind of keep that sequencing and correlation together. So 3-3-2-2 three, three, two, two is generally what I look for. If, there's, uh, if the slate's a lot smaller, like last night, while it did not work out with Boston, um, I do like going like a 4-3-1 uh, four, four, or a 4-2-2 two, two type build in terms of cash games on DraftKings. Um, if you want to talk about that more, again, reach out and DM, and we can go over uh, that as well. Another one, if you're going with Ty France, Mitch Hanniger is going to be in there. They are an excellent one-two top of the lineup value going up against Martin Perez. They're both hitting lefties well. They've both been good on the season. They've been the driving force behind uh, Seattle's a hot start leading or tied for the lead in the division. Brian Reynolds is another one for Pittsburgh. He's a nice one-off I like here. He's hit lefties very well. He's hitting, I believe, third in the order for Pittsburgh. He is a switch hitter and uh, has been hitting lefties a little bit better. Jay Happ's been only, you know, pretty much average at best. His numbers, if we go look at the team stacking tab and we go look at Pittsburgh over here, we'll slide over to Happ. What stands out? 312 ERA. So it looks great on the cover. But if we dig in a little bit closer, that XFIP is a little over two runs worse. Uh, 127 whip isn't great. Um, it's not bad either, but he's given up a lot of fly balls. We know that about him. He can give up some home runs. So I like the, uh, Brian Reynolds or even if we go look at the splits here for him, we see that he's been solid against lefties, but he struggles a little bit more against righties. So get your righties in there against J.A. Happ. So that covers all my top plays at each position. Uh, make sure to check out the, the weather. We don't really have too many concerns here today, but make sure to come over here. You can check out my weather ranking for all the games today. 
Um, you can check out what those rankings mean down here. And if you want to see a little bit further, uh, you know, the hourly forecast or the radar, definitely come over here and scroll over to the link and it'll take you to the weather.com weather station that's closest to each stadium. You can check out the bullpen report. There's a lot of stuff going on in this sheet. So make sure to reach out if I haven't covered uh, something that you wanted me to. I can definitely either do a video on it. We can do some one-on-one -on -one coaching um, in chat, whatever you want. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure to smash up that like button. Hit subscribe. A lot more videos to come. Let's go get some green screens tonight, everyone. Good luck out there.